Hello, my name is Van Carlson, President and Founder of Strategic Risk Alternatives. Thanks for joining our video today. Today we're going to be talking about some uh, letters that the IRS recently sent out along with some updates on the coronavirus and how we're handling it as a company and your insurance managers. Uh, our format kind of bounces back and forth between questions between Dustin and myself. Uh, we're going to always maintain that and hopefully um, you'll find this video informative and answer any questions or concerns you may have. So, thanks for joining us. Dustin? Yeah, so uh, we were made aware that uh, last Friday the IRS sent out a letter to our clients that are involved in the micro-captive uh, or the reinsurance company ownership. Uh, if you want to hold that up. Dan yeah. got his copy. He has uh, I got five several, copies. several companies uh, yeah. that he takes advantage of this program with. Yeah. Um, so, you know, right off the bat, the thing people want to know, do our clients need to take any action at this time? No, they do not. Uh, we've we've uh, reached out to our legal counsel, uh, several different CPA firms that we work with. Um, this was a fishing expedition, in our opinion, to find people that were potentially involved in abusive type mm -hmm. uh, situations like the Abrahami cases and so forth. So, uh, our clients don't need to take any actions. We provide all the trip white sixes, so our clients are attaching that to their personal tax returns. Their operating company's got to have it, and of course, we follow it with their reinsurance company's returns. So, mm -hmm. as of right now, no, no action re needed regarding the letters they would have received from the IRS. Okay, and then, uh, yeah, just to reiterate that, continue to attach the 888-6s to your tax return. We provide all of those to you, uh, so just business as normal there. Then Actually, also, you should have already received, received some yeah, of those trip weights. For your cases. personal and your operating companies, if applicable, if you took that. We know, the, we know the deadline for taxes has been extended, but we wanted to make sure we got it to you by March 15th. Absolutely. And yeah. then so. the reinsurance ones will just come with the reinsurance return uh, later yeah. this year. And then I just want to point out, you know, you talked about the lawyers and the CPAs we talked about. This was consensus across the board. Uh, independent responses from people saying the same thing fishing expedition, scare tactics on the part of the IRS. Um, Unfortunately. Yeah. Um, so now what if a client has closed their company? Uh, the letter states, if you've closed your company, uh, there's a statement in the letter uh, on the second page here uh, where it instructs you to sign, fill out some information. Uh, what about those clients that have closed their company? Uh, again, it's only if you thought you had an abusive captive. A lot of people did shut their captives down, especially if you were being managed by um, not really a risk, man risk management company like Strategic Risk Alternatives, but more like with the law firms that were out there promoting this program as an estate tax play. Again, this tax code was hijacked back in uh, the mid-2000s. Uh, it was hijacked for estate tax planning. Tax estate tax planners are the ones that went out and took this program and abused it for something they were never designed to, and that was really to avoid paying estate taxes. Uh, the, the last several cases that the IRS has even won in court have all been, the sole purpose was to avoid estate taxes. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, um, that's not what we do. The PATH Act actually did away with that, and you know, when it came enforceable in 2017. You can have any, these things are, not, are useless for estate tax purposes. Why the IRS still demonizes these tools is um, unfortunate to say the least. Yeah. So, you know, one of the things that, that's really disappointing about, um, well, I know you had another question, so I'm gonna, before I get into this more in depth into this letter, but let's talk about who sent this letter. Um, what, what's yeah. your next question, Dustin? Well, so the Fraud Enforcement Office, this is a new office the IRS just started uh, mid March. Uh, this has to be one of their first actions that they took. Uh, that's led by Damon Rowe. Uh, recently appointed the uh, chief of this office. Uh, so just yeah, talk about that and what your uh, thoughts are on that new office and what they're trying to do here. Yeah, I, I think um, hopefully it's to find bad actors in our industry. No different than why FINRA exists for uh, mm -hmm. bad actors in securities, you know, people with licenses and so forth. So if we get some kind of regulation uh, out of it, it would be nice if if all the insurance managers were to get together and start to regulate ourselves, I don't think that's ever going to happen. we got way too many greedy people in this business still mm -hmm. and charging an exorbitant amount of fees and, and doing very little for their clients, unfortunately. Um, but, you know, the IRS likes to go out and do the one glove fits all mentality. Uh, the gentleman that was appointed to him came, I believe, from their criminal, criminal yeah. uh, investigation division. 
uh, as if this was criminal activity. Um, you know, I have to point out all the time that this is the law passed by Congress in the 1986 Tax Reform Act. Actually, when we had a a, a decent Congress, Tip O'Neill and Ronald Reagan were getting together, and Tip O'Neill was a Democrat, a Speaker of the House. Could you imagine if we had a Speaker of the House like that today working with our current executive branch? Those days are gone. But this Tax Reform Act was introduced, this tax code was introduced, because crop insurance was not being insured. Now, that's a big government program right now. It's the biggest crop subsidy out there right now is the premium taxes for crop insurance. Um, you know, and again, you see this corona thing come out, and now you're seeing government trying to fill out, bail out small, small businesses. And I would argue that the government's already done something for the small businesses. Unfortunately, the IRS has demonized so much. CPAs aren't, they, just, they don't want to, they're trying to still figure out the 2017 Tax Reform Act. Uh, is entertainment deductions or not? I mean, this is the conversation about here, CPA. It's not alone to understand our 831B tax code. Um, and unfortunately, um, you know, they, all they have to do is read the headlines and they're going to turn a lot of their clients away from doing our program. Um, and I'm sure they're the ones helping right now help pay the payroll for employees, the rent that's, you know, I get an email from a client today who owns a lot of real estate properties. He's wanting to know if he has any coverage under his policies because now he's got people that are tenants that can't afford to pay their rent. Mm -hmm. it, it, by the way, his loans aren't going to stop coming in either. So I, I just get really frustrated the way things have gone. And, and the fact that they use this in a way, this, 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 uh, to me it's intimidation. Yeah. I mean, it's an act of bureaucracy to intimidating the taxpayers. One of the lines they use in here, right above where it says penalties of perjury of statement, they, it reads, We'll take your actions in response to this letter into account when considering future compliance activity related to your microcaptive insurance arrangement. Pure intimidation. Absolutely. Disappointing. A federally ran bureaucracy by career driven bureaucrats writing that line in there? What is that even supposed to mean? We're going to, we'll take it into consideration. No, this is, this is a pure Tim, and I'm sorry, you know, our business owners are risk takers, they're entrepreneurs, they're forward thinking people, and to, to receive this kind of a letter is, it, it ought to be concerning for all, any American that, that actually does pay taxes, that when you, have, when you have this kind of a thing coming out. Well, and then, you know, to me, that it's so tone deaf with what's oh. going on right now with coronavirus. Yeah. We'll, Leave it to the government and their timing, right? We're, we're going to link down below to a New York Times article uh, from over the weekend. Great all article about from how New York Times. this 831B program, the microcaptive program that the IRS is demonizing in this letter. It's all about how it's going to bail out companies. It's going to be a lifeline to these companies that participate in this. Well, the other thing, too, that's frustrating for us is, you know, again, again most of these tools are used for large companies. Fortune 500 companies have been utilizing their own insurance companies for a long, long time. And, and I, I guarantee you, these guys didn't get these letters, right? Mm -hmm. This division that's even sent this letter out is, what's it called again? It's the Large Business and International yeah. Division is where the new office falls under. Yeah, which means you have to be 10 million more in revenue mm -hmm. to, to fall into that category. Well, as you guys know, most of our clients do a lot less than 10 million dollars in revenue. Absolutely. Uh, so they wouldn't even qualify based in that department. So, and I, like I said, I got five of these. I got five of these letters. Um, my wife got one in her name, I got one in mine, and it just went down the line. But um, again, I, 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 I don't know the purpose of it other than intimidation or find bad actors or find people with guilty conscience, I guess, that were actually in, that were in this program for the sole purpose of avoiding taxes for state tax planning purposes. Um, you know, again, the Abrahami case, those are cases that happened in 08, mm -hmm. 09. That was 12 years ago now. Yeah. Uh, they just came out in court in the last couple, two years. It's just, things have changed. Let's move on. I, and again, you know, like I said, I've said this a lot in our videos lately. It's like. Guys, okay, IRS, you guys want some cases. Suppose you've got 80% of your people you sent out 200 settlements for settled, which we now we've got to know that that's been propaganda too by the IRS, that that's not the case at all. Yeah. Nobody's settled yet. Um, they, they, they opened the window for to settle, but nobody has settled to our knowledge. Um, and the reserve case just got, a, just got uh, a, in the appeal court right now that uh, I think like 12 states signed on, uh, the, the Attorney General signed on, mm -hmm. saying that this, this is not an uh, abusive case yeah. under the 831B tax code. So we don't know where that case is going to go. And we also know the, the IRS is still cherry-picking cases to go to court with. They're not taking a lot of the cases out there that have good facts 
and they're just choosing not to take those to yeah. court because they want to get that headline out there. Oh, absolutely. They want to intimidate and scare. They want to yeah. intimidate and scare. And in, in, in a world where we're supposed to be a democracy, a republic, these are bureaucrats. We don't get to vote on these people. We don't have a say on that. We have a dysfunctional government at best today, and more and more power is given to the bureaucracies to interpret the laws. The IRS is, falls under the executive branch. They are to enforce the law, not to interpret it Absolutely. as the way see fit. And basically what they're trying to do is scare you from the point of even doing it. Mm -hmm. And that's unfortunate, given where we're at today with, with the coronavirus and what's happening with our clients and the lifeline that this program provides them. And if you think the insur traditional insurance companies are going to jump out and want to cover more and more business interruption type policies, that's, that's, yeah. a, that's not going to happen. Yeah, to, to add to that, um, you know, what the IRS should be doing in light of the coronavirus, in light of... We're hearing from loss adjusters, you know, 99% of traditional policies are not going to provide coverage under coronavirus. So what the IRS should be doing is providing guidance. They should be telling business yes. owners how to do this the right way. Yes. Rather than sending this letter and trying to scare people into not doing it. Yeah. Because this and, is going to save small business. You know, like I said before, you know, hey, life insurance companies, at one point life insurance contracts were considered abusive transactions because of the 1970s when interest rates were high and you could put any amount of premium you wanted into them. Uh, they came out with a modified endowment, basically a MEC formula. Mm -hmm. You know, if they don't like the amount of premium they're putting in these insurance companies, then come out with a, what's, re yeah. what's reasonable. I mean, we're finding out right now, our, for the most part, our underwriting is pretty, has been fairly conservative. We're, yeah. we're realizing now most of these clients are going to be they're going to hit their limits of their policies, and they're going to and they're going to be out on their own. Um, but that it is what it is. I mean, it, we can't really help that right now at this point. But but we're just trying to be the best, be the best best in breed in this class under insurance management. Do the right thing for our clients. Make sure that our fees are in line with our clients. Mm -hmm. uh, make sure that we're aligned with each other when we have claims. That we have a fiduciary to the pools. You know, it's been interesting for a lot of our clients. So obviously, they're reaching out to us and asking us, well, how bad the pools are going to be hit. Yeah. Our clients know they're going to participate potentially in other people's losses. Um, this is our process. This is our program. We're risk mitigator guy, right? We're not, we hire the tax attorneys and we hire the CPA firms. We are, if your CPA or attorney, law firm has been out promoting this pro program, they've been promoting it not for risk mitigation. They, cause they wouldn't even tell you what the general liability policies covered and didn't cover. You know, I've got almost 30 years in the risk management business, so, so I know I've had those phone calls. And unfortunately, a lot of property and casualty agents today are doing the one thing they hate most when the client calls up, and as there's no coverage for that. Yeah. It is the worst thing to tell a client. It's not, and it's over and over and over again, and business owners, friends, family members, local communities, uh, leaders in their community. Are trying to figure out how to keep their doors open and keep, and these are the guys who are going to keep their empl small employers are going to try to keep their employees on the payroll. Big companies are being furloughed. And that being said, when I watch the meet in the news meet, I have yet to hear of a government agency employees being furloughed. I'm, yeah. I'm confused about that. Why is municipality, states, and federal employees? Business owners take every day to do risk, be, and that is to run their own business, to create profit. You can't tax so far anyway. A dollar that's not profitable, right? Yeah. So the business owner has to take that money. Government has never been able to create profit, never been able to create jobs or businesses. They create regulations. Here's what's going to be interesting. We get through this coronavirus. Let's see what different bureaucracies come out of this. You know, after 9-11, we had TSA, we had a lot more bureaucracies. After 08, 09, we had Frank Dodd and a ton more regulations and bureaucracies. Unfortunately, we run to the government with answers. Government gave us a tool called the 831B tax code to take advantage of certain situations where you're self-insuring risk. And that's obviously self-insuring risk is not a deduction. So how do you make a deduction? Mm -hmm. Now, granted, you got to have people in place to make sure that you're protected and, and rules are rules. But again, who sets those rules? Who sets those? Is the IRS. They've won all these cases. They've got all this stuff on. Yet they've not come out with any new notices since 2009-26 regarding the safe harbor rulings of under the 831B tax code. That's 11 years ago. Yeah. 11 years ago. Risk is getting more and more complicated all the time. And if anything indicates that, right now, Absolutely. the coronavirus. Um, you know, we're, we're coming out with some different ideas for, for next year to identify some of the risks we've missed um, with, with risk mitigation and what we could have done better for some of our clients, unfortunately. 
these are the situ these are the times and the situations we learn from. Um, anyway, absolutely. Well, anything else, Dusty? No, I, th I think we'll leave it there. I think we gave uh, everyone uh, a lot of information there. So, and they, hey, by, by the way, you know, please go to our website if you have a claim or if there's any questions you might have on that on the process of that. We're always here to answer any of your questions. And and uh, you know, hey, we'll get through this. Things will be a lot better going forward. Um, we're all going to be better for this down the road, and, and we'll get through it. And so, so along with your businesses. For our clients that have taken this approach with us and done risk mitigation, um, you're going to see this as a lifeline. And I hope, I hope in the future more CPAs, more clients, more, more different advisors understand our program, understand the 831B tax code, and not just listen to the noise from the IRS. Thank you for your time. Thank you.